Hello everyone. Uh, in this lecture we're going to conclude our discussion on Prolog and uh, we are going to discuss in some detail the underlying Prolog algorithm. So uh, recall from our first discussion on Prolog or on logic programming we said that an algorithm consists of a logic part and a control part and that the logic programmer took, takes care of the logic part whereas the abstract machine in our case the Prolog algorithm takes care of the control part and that's what we're gonna look at today the control part so the sequence of execution in, pro in prolog control part depends on first the rule order that means that the first applicable rule is selected first uh, so for example if we have a we have a uh, rule for relation A let's say we have two rules for relation A A is true if B1, B2 up to Bn is true or A is true if C1, C2 and so on up to Cn is true uh, then in the prolog control part the first applicable rule is selected so it the order of the rules actually matters so first prolog uses the first rule for a and then it uses the second rule for a goal order what does that mean well within a rule the leftmost goal is picked first so once again if we go back assuming that the first rule has been selected here then we have a number of sub goals on the right hand side and it's the first sub goal that is selected first so prolog first tries to prove b1 if b1 succeeds it tries to prove b2 and so on so this is what we mean by rule order and goal order. So an answer to a query uh, therefore depends on the ordering of the goals as well as the ordering of the rules or facts in the database. So we're saying this order does matter, the order of the rules and how we order the individual goals inside on the right hand side of each rule. Now here we can uh, show uh, our first version of the control algorithm and this is a kind of a, a high level version and we will we will show a more detailed version a little bit later <coughs> but uh, let's go through this uh, so we start a prolog starts with a query as the current goal so remember when whenever we are uh, in the prolog interpreter let me actually bring that one up here Prolog waits for me to give a query. So for example, when I do this, I ask is 3 a member in the list 1, 2, 3? I'm posing a query uh, to which uh, Prolog will find an answer, in this case true. So we start with uh, a query as the current goal so uh, in my case that's the the member query uh, while the current goal is not non-empty we have a while loop here while the current goal is non-empty ch choose the leftmost sub goal so we choose the leftmost sub goal of the query in uh, my case 
my query was not uh, uh, co consisted only of a single sub goal. If I have a comma after uh, the, the first sub goal, I might have some other uh, uh, parts of the query. For example, if I do member, is there a member in the list one, two, three? And there is the same member in the list uh, A, B, two, three. In this case, my query consists of two calls, and the first one is the leftmost sub goal, and then I have a second sub goal. In this case, I get two solutions. X is two and X is three because uh, two and three are, are uh, members of both uh, the first list and the second list. So this is what it meant by choosing the leftmost sub goal. So I'm choosing this sub goal in this example. Now, if a rule applies to the sub goal, then select the first apl applicable rule. So Prolog will try to find does it have a rule that applies to this first sub goal? And if it has, then it will select the first applicable rule. And remember that member is actually an inbuilt relation in Prolog. So it will find the first, uh, try to find the rule that uh, is, is applicable to this. And then it will form a new current goal. So if a rule applies to this, then this particular relation might be converted into another goal that depends on the right hand side of the rule that was selected. That's what we mean by a form a new current goal. Now if, uh, if Prolog is able to use a fact, for example, then this is uh, uh, immediately true and then it really disappears and the only thing that remains is uh, this goal here, the second goal. Now if, it's, uh, if there's no rule that applies to the sub goal, then we backtrack. And we have we have discussed already backtracking as one of the main ingredients of uh, the Prolog algorithm. So this is our first. Uh, uh, yes, uh, let me let me actually point uh, to when when the when the algorithm uh, finishes terminates. Uh, it terminates when the current goal is non-empty. So we're always trying to form a new current goal, but at some point, Prolog is able to use a fact, which means that a particular sub-goal is true, and it's not transformed into a new goal. And th at that point, the current goal is really just empty, and the algorithm uh, finishes or terminates. So let's take a, a, an example here, uh, which is called drinks. And I'm going to start by loading this example. And as you recall, loading in Prolog is done by using the consult relation. And I have to give the whole path to the program. Right, so this uh, succeeded. I was able to load this. And what does this program do? Well, it's a file called drinks.pl and it contains only four facts. Drinks John Coke, drinks John Pepsi, drinks Tom Fanta, drinks Tom Pepsi. And the semantic here is that John drinks Coke, John drinks Pepsi and so on. Now, uh, one relation that we haven't seen up to now, seen up to now is the listing relation, so I can say listing drinks, which uh, just links uh, lists uh, the drinks relation. So just listing basically the code. Now what I want to do now is I want to trace what happens during execution. So I can 
I can uh, instruct Prolog to in go to into a trace mode. And once I've done that, it shows that it's actually in trace mode. And now I want to post a query. Drinks John X drinks Tom X. So what what am I asking? I'm actually asking is there a drink that John drinks which Tom drinks as well. And now I hit the enter key. So now you notice that Prolog is um, showing me what happens during the execution and the first thing it's uh, trying to do is proving this leftmost subgoal. Now why is that? Well according to our algorithm it says start with a query as the current goal so the whole query here is the current goal while the current goal is not empty, do choose the leftmost subgoal. So it chooses the leftmost subgoal here. If a rule applies to the subgoal, then select the first applicable rule. So it says now drinks John, comma some strange uh, sequence here of characters, but this is this is. Uh, really just an internal variable. So instead of having an x here, Prolog uses some kind of an internal variable which has this name underscore g537. So if I hit uh, enter now, it is able to, it was able to instantiate this internal variable with uh, the, the constant coke. And why is that? Well according to our program, this fact, drinks John comma Coke, is the first fact in our database. And this is a applicable rule, and it's the first one that is used. Select the first appli applicable rule. So, at that point, X has been given the value Coke. Now if I hit enter now, the new goal that needs to be proved is drink Tom Coke, Tom comma Coke. So why is that? Because in the algorithm it says form a new current goal. And how does it form the new current goal? Well, this part was proved because we were able to use a fact once X had been instantiated with the constant Coke, drinks John comma Coke was true because that's one of the facts in our database. And when forming the new goal then, this part disappears because it's a fact, and drinks Tom comma X becomes drinks Tom comma Coke, because X had the value Coke, or this uh, internal variable G537. So now I hit enter. And it says fail, drinks Tom comma Coke. It fails. Uh, and why is that? Why does it fail? Because there's nothing in the, there's no fact in the database that tells us that uh, Tom drinks uh, Coke. Tom drinks Fanta and Pepsi. So I hit enter again. And then it says redo drinks John, comma, G537. And uh, here it's trying another solution to the original subgoal. Uh, so it's doing the backtrack part. It's backtracking and uh, trying another solution to the original query and what is the next possible fact? It's this one, drinks John Pepsi. So it instantiates the variable again now with a constant Pepsi and then it forms a new goal because 
th this part ha is true and the remaining part is the one that needs to be needs to be pr proved which is then drinks uh, Tom Pepsi and drinks Tom Pepsi is true because it's a fact in the database it's uh, it's applicable it's uh, one of the applicable rules and the solution to this original query is then x is equal to Pepsi So this, uh, by, by using trace, one can see what happens uh, during the execution of the algorithm, and uh, uh, it's it's a good thing to to use when one is, uh, for example, trying to debug a, a, a prolog program. Now to to exit the debugging phase, I can do no trace here. It actually shows then debug here, which is interesting. Maybe I can say no debug. Oh, right. Okay. 